Do I need to open up the waiting room? Um, everything's good to go. Um, Michael, you can uh, start the session. Do I need to open up the waiting room? Sorry. Um, everything's good to go. Um, Michael, you can uh, start the session. Okay, thank you, Laura. Um, so first of all, I would like to actually welcome- Do I need to open up the waiting room? It seems that there is a playback. Um, everything's good to go. Um, Michael, you can. Uh... Sorry about that. I was having a actually technical issue. Um, first of all, I would like to actually welcome um, everyone to this actually session, actually B1 community, actually university um, engagement with City Studio London. Um, we're very actually excited to have um, the folks here from City Studio, actually London, to have joined us actually this year at our conference. All of, of our actually roundtable actually speakers have been um, um, actually invited guests, um, and they have come here to uh, share about their experience with this very actually innovative project. Um, I'm going to actually first of all actually call on all of our actually panel speakers to just actually introduce um, themselves and their actually role actually with City Studio actually London and then I will go into some um, actually general actually guidelines about how this actually session is going to be run and how actually questions are going to be asked. So I'm going to first actually call on actually Misha. So hello everyone. Thanks very much for, for including us in this exciting opportunity to share about the City Studio London experience. Uh, my name is Misha Schlemmer and I'm the manager of City Studio London and I'm really excited today to be um, joined by some of my colleagues who are also participants in this first year of City Studio London. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, how about actually Madison? Hi hey everyone, I'm Madison Loader. I am a University of Western undergraduate psychology student. I've taken so far four community engaged learning courses and two of which were this past year with City Studio. Great, thank you Madison. And next you, William. Hi, uh, my name is William Pohl. I'm a professor at Fanshawe College um, in the GIS and Urban Planning Program. Uh, this past year, I've had a chance to work on two city studio projects, which uh, we're very excited to share with the group today. Great. Thank you, William. And then also actually Kinga. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kim Colton. I work at the City of London. And this past year, I've worked on two city studio projects, would have, which have been really, really great. Great. Thank you. Leora. Hi, I'm Leora Schwartzman. I'm a faculty member in the psychology department. And um, I did a stud city studio course, just one this year, uh, and worked together with Kinga, um, as well as Madison. Great, thank you. And then also Jacob. Hi there. I am a recent graduate of the GIS and Urban Planning Program at Fanshawe College and had the opportunity to work on two uh, city studio projects partnered with the City of London uh, alongside William Pohl. Great experiences. Great, thank you. Um, so for this actually session, there are actually two co-chairs. So actually myself, um, I'm actually, my, sorry, I'm actually Michael Shire and I'm from the University of Toronto and I have actually my colleague here, Adam Jog, who's from actually um, um, Imagine Canada and he's going to help facilitate the actually question or actually chat portion at the end of the session. If you would like to ask a question, please put your full name um, into the chat, um, actually first and also actually last name, uh, and then we will get to you or actually call on you um, at that time. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn things over to actually Misha and turn off actually my camera um, and um, we will see you again, I guess. Thank you very much, Michael. So again, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we're hoping to share about what our experience has been so far um, in London and maybe hear some ideas that you have for us and also answer any questions you might have about uh, maybe implementing this model in, in your city. Um, 
Yeah, so City Studio started in Vancouver in 2011. Um, it's a model that now has about 12 locations around the world, across Canada, uh, Australia, and Europe. And in 2019, City Studio launched um, in London, Ontario. It's a pretty exciting partnership. So I'm going to just dive in and share with you what we've been doing. One sec here. Oops. So... So you can find out um, everything that we talk about today is on our website at citystudiolondon.ca. Um, this is a really exciting partnership between um, five post-secondary institutions, the City of London and Pillar Nonprofit Network. So these are our partners here. Um, so yeah, we have Brescia University College, Fanshawe College, Huron University College, King's University College and Western University. Um, Pillar Nonprofit is a network of over 600 nonprofit organizations through the Southwestern Ontario region. Um, and Pillar Nonprofit runs a social innovation co working space called Innovation Works with over 200 social innovation organizations that work out of the space. And so, some, some of our in class sessions this year actually took place off campus at Innovation Works, uh, which was a bit easier for the city staff to join uh, rather than going off campus or up to campus, and also a great opportunity for the students to get off campus um, and to be exposed as well to the Pillar Nonprofit Network at, at Innovation Works. So the way that City Studio works is that we first start by convening city staff, um, and that's how we kind of harvest projects. So all of the projects, this year we ran 21 campus course collaboration projects between the city staff and faculty at the universities and colleges. And so we, can, we convened city staff and we came up with lots of project ideas. Initially, we came up with about 80 project ideas. And then we narrowed them down and asked city staff to really step forward and champion these project ideas in the classroom. We asked them to um, commit to, it, to joining the classroom for three sessions. Usually the first session was to introduce the project at some midpoint to kind of check in on the project and then for some final presentation. So that was sort of the minimum of what we asked for the, from the city staff. Um, then when we had our projects, we began to harvest courses from the schools to be able to match the projects with the schools. So similarly, we collected uh, interested courses from across all five campuses. We asked those courses be willing to uh, run a project inside their classroom, um, to have the city staff come into their classroom three times during their term, whether that was a semester or full year, and then to help the students uh, present their work at the end of the semester at our event, which is called Hubbub. And that happens twice a year at the end of each semester. And the students pr prepare a poster for that presentation. So um, we worked with the faculty to try to figure out what would be the best way to scope the work inside their classroom to be able to create uh, deliverables for each team within the classroom to, to offer back to the city staff. So that was kind of designing the project together with the city staff and the faculty and then eventually the students as well. And then during the course, the students launched their projects, um, including in the public. So we had some projects of the 21 this year. Uh, for example, one was a survey that course that was about polling uh, students in London around ride sharing programs. And so the students created a social media campaign and they actually launched that campaign through social media accounts that they, that they created as well as through the city studio network to try to get information for the city about whether or not students are using the ride share programs that are available. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we share and scale the projects. So we have these um, end of semester events uh, called Hubbub. In our first event in December was hosted at City Hall. Um, we had the deputy mayor and the presidents from all of the post-secondary institutions join us for that event. Um, and it was a great opportunity for the students to just pitch their projects in a pretty informal way. They would do sort of like 30 second pitches about their project um, and get to talk to city staff. And it really helped get the city staff excited about what was possible with City Studio. So that's kind of how the City Studio model works. Um, as I mentioned, we work with all of these partners and we help to sort of showcase their vision for community engaged learning on our website. So we also have pages for each of the institutions on our website where you can see kind of what the background is around why are these partners involved in campus community collaboration um, and also what kind of what courses are they involved with currently. 
So here we can see that this year, Western, for example, had about 80 students participate in City Studio, uh, four projects and five faculty and staff and five courses. And um, basically a big piece of our work this year was creating this website and it's designed to really help the model work. And so each, each piece has a very, has a sort of call to action and a function. Uh, and so we, we really focus on trying to support the universities in recruiting students into these courses. And so we're currently working on matching for next year, but these are the matches from this past year. We had our 21 matches. We posted all the courses that were related to the City Studio projects so that students could easily find them and register for those courses. They could search by institution, by semester, et cetera. And then we also um, have the call to action for the faculty and city staff, where you can see that we're asking faculty and city staff to submit an application. Um, and you can see in our application, we're asking questions around um, just their contact information, uh, what kinds of projects, what kind of challenge the project's trying to address, what type of deliverables that they might benefit from. And then we wanna understand where is the project situated within the City of London strategic plan. So all of the City Studio projects are related to a part of the City of London strategic plan. And likewise, we ask similar kinds of questions to the faculty to understand about their courses. Um, and then we start the matching process, which is currently what we're, we're in at the moment. And when those matches are finished, then we'll post them onto the student courses so that the students can register, hopefully um, beginning of July, actually. So in less than a month. So these are the projects that we did this year. And Hubbub, again, this is our spring event that happened. Um, if you're interested in learning more, we have a, a short 60 second video about it. And then we also have a longer one hour video uh, where we, we did the event actually online because we were home uh, by that time. So you can, you can find out more about the projects. And today we have participants from, from two projects. Well, more than that actually, but I'll showcase kind of two projects. And then we can dive in in our discussions later too about more projects and they will also share more detail about their projects. But just to give you an idea of what kinds of projects are here, when you click inside any of these projects, you can find out more information about them. So the first uh, project we'll, I'll share with you is the uh, toolkit for implementing London's community diversity and inclusion strategy. So that's the project that um, uh, Kinga and Leora and Madison were working on together. And when we click into that project, we find a lot of information because they worked really hard on this project. Uh, it was actually a collaboration between two classes. So Leora's class ran for the full year through both the fall and the winter semester. And then they were joined in the winter semester with, by a, a theater studies course that helped to sort of build out the final deliverables. So you can find sort of more information about the project, they, these are the posters that the students make. Uh, you can find information, sort of opportunity for the students to showcase their work. The students can also use this as a reference uh, in their CV or in their um, LinkedIn account. They can link good. this. Um, oh, yeah, I can I'm hear I'm finding somebody. them very. Somebody's just very. Somebody's maybe shy. not on mute. Is that Laura? Maybe. I think we can hear you. They're well. I'm testing them on their chat. You're, <laughs> Dave's excuse is he's not using two screens Back here. And that's why he never sees the chat because it comes. There we go. Okay. So these students were working on these, these toolkit around the different isms in the, in the city. And so they actually created a project website um, which is all linked and you can find then all of the deliverables of the, of the students. So they have a poster for each of the isms. They have the Sanism poster, physical ableism in London. And they have the racism in London, xenophobia. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's kind of in, interesting to reflect this year about now in the current times that we're living, how, um, how we were working on that issue of racism through the year. And so it's in, they, the students create these posters, which actually uh, have the different strategic um, recommendations that they're making back to the city around how to deal with sanism, for example, in London, um, as well as 
uh, they created different content. So here there's about, I think this is about a half an hour podcast about racism that's really excellent. Um, they're quite playful and fun, but also very um, provocative and, and uh, penetrating. I think the students are also very honest about their findings. Um, and then they also have, so I guess it's back on our page here. We have some videos of testing. They created some different audio walks um, that you could, you could listen to to help build uh, compassion and empathy for these different scenarios that, that Londoners are living with. So these are some short videos that just showcase uh, some students testing the, the audio walks that they were doing. And then we have all the content of the audio walks here as well, as well as all the posters. So all that information is there. So I'm just showing you where that is. So as we continue to talk, you can continue to be pulling information off that. And then I'll show you another project of participants today, which was this Goodwill Industries Neighborhood Revitalization Planning Visualization. So this is a one city block. And this was with the, um, William Pohl and Jacob Smith's class. We're working on this. And this is one city block um, in the downtown area. And the students were asked to um, kind of create some alternative urban planning proposals for the area, tying into some of the existing planning around um, active transportation and um, transportation kind of through ways. And so that we had four teams, that was actually about eight teams that submitted projects. And then William's team uh, worked hard to narrow down sort of the top four teams. And then we have the top four teams here showcased. And so we can see in more detail what they're looking at, sort of specifically doing some analysis of who are, which businesses and organizations are located in, in the area. And then these were actually the designs that were put forward. And so you can imagine that for a city block in London, um, this, this type of visualization can be really useful because this is something where um, the city can start to imagine what might be possible. And it can really help the community have some dialogue and conversation about what might be possible. Uh, because for most of us, we can't actually imagine very well um, this kind of 3D rendering. And the students did this work. Um, they worked really hard and, and very efficiently. Uh, they created great work and uh, I'm really excited to talk with William and, and Jacob a little bit more about what their experience was like around that. So yeah, you can see sort of all of the different projects. Then finally we have our events. We do have a little video there about what happened at Hubbub. If you want to watch, it's about a minute long. And then these are our the media following that we've had so far this year. Communicating about the projects has been a big priority to try to help engage, get in, get, build engagement around this amazing student work that has been done this year. So we've had lots of different uh, engagement, including students from Fanshawe who, uh, who are in the broadcasting program, um, came out and looked at the projects. And then we also have a number of YouTube videos uh, that we've made and we're continuing to make to help people understand what the City Studio model is about. And so that's kind of the main um, navigation. I guess the last thing is we do a participant survey at the end of each semester. So we try to collect that data about whether or not our model is working um, and what we can do to improve it and what, our, what is the impact that this program is actually having. Um, we are in a two-year pilot and we're really hoping to build out a sustainable model that can, that can serve our city in the long run. So I'm just going to invite our participant uh, panelists to um, speak a little bit about their experience um, from their perspective in, in City Studio. So they're just pulling their videos back up here. So um, William Pohl, would you like to start by sharing your experience? You're in my top corner. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Misha. That was a, a really good overview of the, of the, the project. Um, I'll spend just a couple of minutes on the, the projects from Fanshawe's perspective. We were actually involved in four projects over, um, over the course of the two terms in the fall and in the winter. Um, there were two projects in GIS and urban planning, a project in digital marketing, and also a project in uh, program evaluation. From my perspective, this is City Studio gives our students an opportunity to bridge the gap between theory and practice. Uh, we talk in the classroom about how things should be, 
And this really creates an opportunity uh, to take what we learn in the classroom out into the community. So that collaborative piece. Uh, it also really reinforces what we're trying to do at Fanshawe College, which is create a signature learning experience that's out in the community where we're meeting with uh, external partners. And it also creates skills uh, that students can use in the community. So uh, complex problem solving, um, social intelligence, working in groups, getting out into the community. Specifically, the project that you highlighted um, was an opportunity for the city to imagine what the new transit uh, locations will look like. So that the intersection you identified, um, the city is looking for ideas and inspiration on what a city block would look like at the new transit hubs. So this is a, a new bus rapid transit, and this was the, um, the location. Um, we partnered with the city staff. So city staff was very much engaged in this project. We had a chance to uh, meet with the city uh, planners at City Hall. Uh, we had a chance to get out into the field and see what was happening on, this, on the premises. Um, and it gave a chance for us to help the city build that, that's, that uh, redesign of, of a community. Um, from my perspective, this is a very much a sustainable type of project. We can do this for the municipality, uh, for the City of London at different locations. Uh, we can do it for different types of projects uh, to help reimagine what the city could be. And it's very much replicable. So we can do this both in the City of London. And then as we broaden out into other stakeholders, other community groups, we look forward to that, uh, to those opportunities and challenges. Thanks. Thanks, William. Jacob, would you like to share from the student's perspective what your experience was like at the project? Definitely. Um, so I got to work on two city studio projects uh, over the course of my last year at Fanshawe. The first project uh, centered around a, uh, a look at community improvement plans and how those might be utilized for business owners and homeowners, specifically along the Hamilton Road corridor in London. Um, that opportunity was great. Uh, we got to go out and do data collection in the field um, along the Hamilton Road corridor and speak to homeowners and business owners, um, some of which uh, my group was lucky enough to, to come across two business owners who were in the process of improving their, their business facade um, by means of, of utilizing these, these programs. So it was a, a great experience to get out into the community and uh, see how these, how these programs are, are used by people in the real world, um, as well as to just get a, a sense of the, the area and to see the potential um, as an er from an urban planning pers uh, perspective. The second project um, was this, this spring, um, centered around the project William was just speaking on, the Soho uh, area. And that was a, a particularly challenging project, um, but a very fulfilling one to work on. Um, challenges that we, we uh, overcame were planning for a development that was inclusive of the existing uses in the area. So uh, the Salvation Army uh, exists um, to the north of the site of that city block that you uh, pointed out on our poster. And that's, that's a, a hot spot for activity. A lot of people are out and about. Um, some people who are down on their luck and utilizing those services that the Salvation Army provides and uh, as well as Goodwill Industries to the south of that city block, which uh, is, they host a cafe in there um, and as well as other various community services. So it was important for us to undertake um, our design process in a way that was inclusive of those land uses and to be cognitive of, of um, those people and how they might benefit from a development in that area as well. So it was a it was a great experience, um, a great team building experience as well, and having having the hubbub events to look forward to, and knowing that your work is going to be seen by a lot of people, and you're going to have the chance to network at these events. That those those uh, thoughts they they carry over into the project in a way that makes you really want to put the most into your work and to learn to collaborate effectively with the people that you're working on these projects with. So it was uh, great for team building. 
and uh, as, as well as uh, to, to bring bring it back to the point that Will said about the, the social um, learning and, and to just learn how to work as a team and communicate. So it was a, a great experience all in all. Okay, thanks Jacob. Um, so I invite Leora now to talk a little bit about uh, her, her project and how it came to be and um, how that collaboration unfolded. Oh, you're on mute, Lyra. Sorry. Actually, maybe me, uh, maybe Kinga should talk first. Okay. Uh, about sort of the project and and uh, what she was hoping for from the city, and then I think it makes sense for me to talk, and then for um, for Madison. If that's okay with you. Does that work for you, Kinga? Kinga works for me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm just going to give you a bit of a background of how this project came about. Um, so within the City of London, we have a Community Diversity and Inclusion Strategy, which is a uh, community-run uh, strategy. So all of our work is out in the community, and we work with over 100 volunteers to implement that is everything that is within the strategy. Um, my role as a staff is to just support that work and kind of help out as needed. Um, so last year, actually, we worked with Leora's class and Madison was part of that class as well um, on just a community engaged learning class to do some research on what are some prevalent forms of discrimination without within London. So we arrived at four different ones. So the ones that Misha talked about racism, Sanism, ableism, xenophobia. And this year we decided to work with Leora, Leora's class as well to kind of further um, learn about what are what are the experiences of Londoners of these forms of discrimination and how can we work together with the community to kind of work move towards a better place for everybody and what are some tangible things that we can work on what are some examples for instance from other communities um, and I think this project was really cool because we didn't only work with your Leora's class, but we also worked with another class. So it was a bit of a collaborative um, partnership with the, between the three of us. Um, so we kind of got to see different angles of how we can approach this, these issues. And it is it has evolved over, over time. And now we're actually going into our second year of partnership to further research all the different isms within London. Thanks, Kinga. Um, so I just want to say, this is not the first time I've taught a community engaged learning course, but um, it was very special. Um, uh, and I think for, for me, for two reasons. One is um, the multidisciplinarity of it. My social science or psychology students working with theater study students, putting their heads together and understanding what the different disciplines had to offer. Um, was really eye-opening and actually quite a bit of fun. I think the other thing that was uh, quite positive for me, uh, um, Misha had to convince me about this early on, but in my other community engaged learning courses, students worked on different projects. And in this course, although there were four isms, if you will, what became very clear to us as a class is there was a lot more commonality and so what we ended up doing is all of us together in the class collaborated. There were qualitative interviews. We worked together on what the script should be. We worked together on the informed consent. Everything was very, um, we just worked as a team. And because of the students' collective wisdom far exceeded mine, um, they really drove a lot of the project. And so there was a fair amount of ownership um, I think the other thing that was um, important about this is that we knew that this was really going to be used. Kinga, as somebody from the city, was quite involved. Um, not only did the students, I should say, present paper uh, posters, but they actually presented these very large documents that will serve as a resource for the city. And Kinga was involved in the evaluation of those documents because the city is going to use them. So pretty much everything students did in my course was um, designed to produce a deliverable for the city. And in so doing, they developed really interesting transferable skills. What Jacob had mentioned is working together in a group. 
project management. I think what was also what they really learned was how to use their scholarship and the knowledge from their scholarship and um, apply it. Not so straightforward. Often they had to come to things from another angle and how to write in a way that was not egghead academic-y. Um, how do you write in a very way, in a way that really addresses a need? And so for me, those were some of the learning take homes. Um, but I think Madison, it's a good segue to Madison who could really talk about what she got and maybe also your classmates. I don't know if you want to speak for them. Yes, hello. Um, so like Leora said, I was in her course working on the CDIS with her and Kinga this year. Um, I was also in another city studio course with the Child and Youth Network. Um, with Leora's class with the CDAS, I think the collaboration was one of my biggest takeaways, um, both between the students in our class and joining with the other course. Um, a lot of our first semester went towards research of theisms and what other communities were doing, um, as well as preparing for really in-depth qualitative interviews that we really got to understand the lived experiences of people in London. Um, and one of my favorite collaborative processes was just getting to bring that information to the other class and kind of getting some of those presentation skills that might not be super formal, but how to make sure that we can give them all the information that they need to do their part of the project. And I think that's something that really developed the presentation skill for me. And I learned that I really enjoy leading presentations in that way. Um, some of the other things about the collaboration I really enjoyed is Leora's class was multidisciplinary. So we had students from all over social science, not just psychology or just sociology. And I think that really created a good dynamic in the class and us all having slightly different views or different expertise um, around different areas. Um, with City Studio specifically, I and a lot of students in our course really enjoyed using innovation works as much as we could. Um, I think Michelle mentioned in her keynote earlier this morning that it's a way to have some of those organic um, connections between like people and kind of networking throughout the community just from being there maybe one day a week or one day every two weeks. And I found that that was really important to me and kind of see what my work could look like after leaving university if I got to work maybe in that building at some point. Um, I think that's everything with that project. The other thing is I do really believe in the transferable skills that these courses give me. Um, going into the other city studio course, I had already done a couple community engaged learning courses. And when I started that course just this past semester, I found that I knew how to sit down and start a project. And that I saw the difference between me and other students just starting this process of doing community courses. And I could really see that I kind of knew how to start and approach it and talk to a community partner. And that was a really nice moment where I saw that the work I put in the last couple of years is going to pay off in my future. Yeah. Thanks, Madison. So these are our panelists, and I think we've got lots of great things to chat about. So um, I'll invite Michael back. Uh, if you're, I think Michael. Yes, I'm there still here. Go. There we go. Uh, so Adam, um, I'm gonna actually turn it over, over to you right now. Um, if there are any questions in the chat. Uh, for sure. Uh, Thanks, Michael, and uh, thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, there definitely are some questions in the YouTube chat. Uh, let's start with Michael McCarthy, uh, who, who asks, uh, from your social media and YouTube publicity, uh, what level of engagement are you seeing? Uh, so I believe that this was a, a question that came through Misha when you were speaking. Um, Thanks for the question, Michael. Yeah, Adam. Um, yeah, so to be honest, um, this year uh, I, I was just a mighty team of one with lots of amazing volunteer support. Um, and so we built the social media kind of possibility. Um, we weren't tracking the analytics very much yet, um, but we do sort of have a high level awareness of what the engagement is like. I'd say different stakeholder groups engage through different platforms. So um, we saw the faculty and especially the city staff engage um, most publicly through uh, Twitter and students probably engaged most through Instagram. 
Um, and then LinkedIn is actually the, the uh, platform where we have the most engagement with. So I think we have about 1,500 kind of followers on LinkedIn. So we'll be doing a lot more of that work this year. Um, but for now, we just wanted to make sure that we had the, that, those channels open uh, and, and begin to populate it with the content. So we'll be doing a lot more of that this year. Thank you. Thank you, Misha. Um, another question from Adele uh, Terrios. Uh, apologies if I mispronounced the last name. Uh, Adele asks, uh, how has COVID-19 uh, impacted city staff's capacity for participation in projects? I'll leave that open yeah. to anyone Kinga, who- Kinga, would you like to answer that one? Uh, sure. So um, the fact that COVID-19 happened later on in the semester, I don't think there was overly a lot of impact on the work we were doing. It just involved a bit more Zoom meetings with the class to kind of adjust uh, our plan of how we were going to finalize the project. Um, so it just, I, I don't think there was overly a lot of effect at the end of the project since it, it happened later on. It, I think it probably will be different um, once we start in September, kind of trying to figure out how to do our work online. So that will probably take a lot more figuring out, kind of adjusting our plan and kind of how we work together. Thanks, and I can add that, um, so for this next year, uh, we've still had lots of interest from city staff to participate. And um, because some of the city staff are being deployed to other areas to help different priority areas, we're also tracking which projects um, maybe won't go forward uh, this year or may not go forward in the fall. So it's affecting a little bit our matching process, I'd say. Um, but we're, that's something we're working really closely with our um, lead person at the city to sort of monitor and track as we match and then just managing people's expectations. So we'll do our best to make sure that uh, we, are, we have all our projects running this year. Well, that's great, thank you both. Um, Adele actually had another question. Uh, this one's for Leora. Uh, she asks, uh, how many students were in your course and how did you coordinate collaboration among an entire class? And just kind of building on a, a comment, uh, uh, apologies, I forget who mentioned it, it might've been Madison, but the sort of multi multidisciplinary kind of nature of the course as well. Like, yeah, I think that's an interesting question that Adele has. How did you co coordinate a collaboration among an entire class like that? So the class, uh, the enrollment is pretty low in that class. Um, and I select students very carefully. Um, and it, uh, we started off with 10, we ended up with nine. I think I could have managed 12. Um, and because we met um, and worked together, I think the this collaboration and this bond just evolved. Um, and I think there are two things that happens to, to sort of make people, we studied intergroup um, contact and what, what gets people together. And one is to have a common cause goal. And the other is for there to be interdependence. And students did have interdependence and each student, uh, I remember we had one class and we had, we had a lot of work to do and I, everybody volunteered. They said, I'll learn how to do like the, I'll do the transcription. I'll figure out how to teach, I'll teach people how to do the coding. Like if, I'll do the organizing. Everybody stepped up to the plate and used their particular strengths. Um, so I think partly it, it arose organically um, but it is not was not a very large class. And so I think that also made it easier for the students to collaborate and to bond and for us to discover each other's strengths. Mad Madison, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Yeah, of course. Um, so I also found that in this class, it was very organic. And I think it was very nice that the amount of people was under 10. My other city studio class had, I believe 30 people and we were also all working on one project. That one was much more difficult to kind of coordinate collaboration. Um, it happened, we ended up with a really awesome project, but I think going through the process was a lot harder just because the professor still did want it to be very self-directed, which I think is important, but kind of trying to come to a consensus with 30 people every class was, was a little difficult. It happened and it was great. But I think 
even just the way you structure the class can make a really big difference. Like we had talked by the end of the semester that if we had two meetings a week, maybe it would have gone a lot better because we could have left done some work and came back and then presented it to our classmates. We're meeting, we met once a week for three hours and it was a one semester project. So it just felt like it was going almost too fast for the amount of time we had to collaborate. So that's something we as a class kind of gave as a recommendation to the professor for the following year because she wanted to continue doing the city studio courses. Um, but with Leora's class with eight people, it was very manageable. And with third year, fourth year courses especially, I think we kind of are more excited and interested in collaborating. So it worked really well. And I'll just say a few words from uh, Fancho's perspective. Um, the example that Misha gave on the visualization of Goodwill. It was actually a collaboration between two classes, urban design and uh, presentation graphics. Um, we had a group of 20 students um, and the faculty assign, uh, assigned the group or allowed students in this class to choose the groups of four. They were all working on the same um, project but they would have different results depending on the discussion that each group had. I think your comment on uh, the organic way that students learn and project management project manage is very uh, true. Uh, we teach the, the technical skills, we give them the frameworks uh, to do the project and students are very creative in my opinion on how they get the projects done. And that's part of the social intelligence piece that, that is an outcome from uh, City Studio and the collaborative work we do. So I think they're great projects. That great, thank you very much. Uh, another question for you, Leora. Um, this one is from Josh Goldschmidt. Um, uh, and if uh, additional context is required for you to answer this question, please just let me know and I can reach out to Josh. But uh, in the chat, he had posted, uh, how did you pitch this to the theater and performance students? Is that oh. enough context to go on? Well, maybe Kinga, okay. do you want to join in on this discussion? Sure, we That's, can team that one. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. So as part of the matchmaking process, Misha um, would have those of us at Western or any, or any, or any, any of the faculty members who had a course that they thought could relate to a given project to meet at the same time with the uh, city uh, the city person. So there was a meeting with Kinga for the CDIS project and anybody else, any other faculty member who had a course that they thought could be relevant. And I talked and then Kim talked, we didn't know each other beforehand and um, when we left, and I, it was between, for me, it was between the CDIS and another project. And as we talked and when we left, we realized, wait a minute, maybe we could do something together. And it just came out of, you know, what's sort of fun is just the brainstorming. I think the opportunity just to get together, play with ideas and explore is something that um, I think the students get exposed to, it's exciting. It's part of what makes being in academe, but also being creative fun. And um, that's how it happened. It's just like Kim and I, we also liked each other. We thought it would be fun to work with each other. Um, I'm sort of animated. Kim is even more animated than I am. <laughs> and uh, that's how it, that happened. It was just like serendipity. Kinga? Yeah, I'll chime in a little bit. Um, so how the match process worked for this is um, the city staff, as Misha had mentioned, came up with a project idea. And then all the professors that were interested in that project expressed their interest. And then it was up to us to see whether those classes would be ma a good match with the project. Um, so when I saw a theater class interested in like a municipal government, course I thought it would be you know interested interesting to kind of see how that would um, turn out so I thought let's go for it and, and try out how this will work um, so yeah we met with Misha, uh, with Misha Leora and Kim who was part of the other course and um, 
yeah, it just kind of happened organically. I think both of the professors found that topic to be interesting and suitable for their course and what they were thinking of doing. And um, I kind of let them take the reins and figure out how it will work for both of their classes and how they can work together. So I kind of, you know, jumped into the deep waters and somehow it worked out. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Um, just monitoring the YouTube chat, uh, no new questions yet. But uh, Michael, uh, did you have any questions that maybe you wanted to interject with at, the, at this time? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I actually wrote down a few things here. So I was actually wondering, actually just in terms of how actually people think about the impact that City Studio actually London is having or how you're thinking about how you're going to actually assess that because you did say this is a two-year pilot um and so um except for from i'm um, actually everyone's actually perspective so like all the partners so from the university the faculty and the students as well thinking about the broader social impact that possibly um all of you are actually having and how you would actually document that to support further sustainability of this um, actually innovative effort. So I can share a little bit about that. And um, so this year, and I don't think I, I mentioned this, that we had a, about over 420 students that participated in City Studio. Um, so we have some of those metrics just kind of off, off the bat because we knew how many students were in each class. Um, the City Studio model itself also has an evaluation kind of tool built in uh, where there's a participant survey. And so Madison actually had been volunteering this year to help with that survey. And so we're in the process now of, of creating the impact report for from the data that we got back. Um, and we're learning as well about how best to collect that data. Um, we're sensitive about, um, especially on campus um, and, and with the city as well, like we, we'd like to be as light touch as possible. We don't wanna send too many asks to the participants. Um, so, I mean, we'd love, to, we'd love to get all their feedback all the time, but um, we're trying to be mindful about how we ask for feedback. Uh, so that's in terms of, there's many layers of impact, I would say. There's impact on the participants themselves, and then there's the impact of the projects in the city and in the community. Um, so it's, uh, it's a great question, and I think it's, it's a big part of City Studio's work. I'd say it's one of the sort of five pillars of our operational day-to-day um, -day work is the evaluation and research. So that's certainly something that we're going to be working on. Lior's got something to add. Yeah. Here. So I, I think the, the, the learning outcomes for the students are really, really clear. I think that it's, it's quite impactful. I think also one of the reasons, Kinga, maybe uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in addition to uh, the city's payoff, in addition to getting projects done, I think they're also hoping to retain people. That is, uh, we, you know, London is, we want to retain the best and the brightest and attract students um, to work in municipal politics and, 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 and work at City Hall. And I know that that is one of the, um, is also one of the, one of the hopes that we will end up, some of these students will choose to um, help the City of London and, and be employed. Um, so, that, that would perhaps be another outcome. Yes. William's got something to add. Sure. Uh, from my perspective, um, this kind of work is really impactful from a decision making. What um, these projects do is provide information, a context for both our stakeholders as well as politicians so that they're confident moving forward with the, the decisions they're making. Uh, on the Hamilton Road project, as the municipality invests in redevelopment, uh, improving facades, it's intended to strengthen that Hamilton Road community. And if we over time can do uh, demographic land use uh, inventories and give that back to the politicians and to staff, they can make better, better decisions for that community. And I think that's the, um, the real strength in City Studio, that we can replicate these projects over time and council can then make, go to the public, uh, go to staff 
with better decision making. That's that's my hope. Kinga, did you have something to add? Yeah, I think one of the biggest impacts, just from my experience in working on the project that we're doing, is the fact that the students are working on a real life project. That it's not something that we just kind of made up and you know it's there to so they get a good experience it is something that we work on on an everyday basis and it is something that you know is moving our city's priorities forward and supporting the work we're doing and supporting the work of the community and just kind of thinking about the topics that our class worked on is they're just big big topics that affect so many londoners and just kind of learning about the experience and what other municipalities are doing or other communities and kind of just getting, get, giving all our volunteers understanding of these topics and kind of how these will impact everybody else in the community and how these will support moving their work forward. So I think the biggest impact was the fact that these students are, you know, they're hands-on working, you know, on a, something that is actually affecting the broader community. And Madison, did you have your hand up to share something? Yeah. Well, talk to kind of both what Kinga and Leora said. Um, I think definitely the big picture working on a project that's going to be implemented or is being directly like co-implemented with the city is a really big motivator for working on the project. And then as well as what Leora said with retaining students, I think that's definitely the impact it's had on me as an individual um, just in the past my, I just finished my fourth year at Western and I'll be doing a couple more courses, but I now have made the decision that I'm definitely going to stay in London for three to five years because through these courses, I have made some connections and I do have, just via doing the courses, I've learned so much more about London. I've written environmental scans about London. So when I go to see these jobs, like, and it says knowledge of London community services, I feel like very prepared for that role. So just learning about London through these courses um, also makes me want to stay here and kind of just builds me to be better to work in this community. Thanks. And Jacob, did you want to share something there? Sure. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, that point that Madison just just made. Uh, it, being able to participate in the city studio model um, as a student, it, it made me interested to be more involved with city studio. Um, that's a, a reason that I'm, I'm here on this panel. Uh, I reached out to you, Misha, relatively recently asking if there was any opportunities for volunteered work. And uh, I would love to be involved with uh, any, any work that pertains to me or, or maybe not so much, maybe I can branch out. And that's the other, the other beauty of it. Uh, you can branch out and learn about different fields of work and develop expertise in different areas. So, uh, I, I really believe in the model in that way that it makes you want to engage with uh, with the community more and be a, a contributing member of the community. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, and I, I would say that that's another piece that we'll be working on this year is the sort of alumni uh, program. So, uh, so that we can track sort of some of those metrics around um, do the, does it affect whether or not the students decide to stay in London and and where do they end up in five years? Oh, Mira has one more thing. Well, and maybe it needless to say, but I'll say it anyway, uh, for students who are going on to jobs or applying to professional schools or grad schools, this kind of experience um, really has them stand out. And I think it's, um, it's good. It's good for an application. That should, that's not the only reason they should be taking the course. But um, I know that where I've written letters for students and um, programs have been very, very interested in the projects that they've done and they've been able to, it's really helped them at the next stage for themselves. I have actually a question if that's okay. Um, and if it's actually already been addressed, please just let me know. My attention's kind of been divided by the monitor in the chat and uh, also listening to what everyone's saying, but it's a question about the sort of the future of the model um, and some of the challenges that, that you think exist in terms of scaling that model, um, maybe both across uh, the country and other countries, but also in terms of a question of kind of scaling it vertically, or if that's even a desire as well. Right now, the model is community-based. Uh, is, is that 
the the sort of desirable kind of scope uh would a would uh, I guess a wider scope uh, presents some sort of other challenges, just kind of questions about challenges associated with the model. Well, um, we were very ambitious in this first year, launching with 21 uh, projects in our first year. Often the city studio locations start with about five. Um, and so I think that really speaks to, uh, in London, the commitment of, our, of the partners. We have a working group that meets every two weeks where we have represent representatives from each of the seven partnering institutions. And we had an advisory circle um, that's more strategic that meets once a quarter. Um, so I think that's part of our sort of sustainable model, I guess, is to really build in the engagement and, um, and this, the collaboration really so that people are, are co-creating the model. So they're, they're inherently invested in it. Um, this year, we're going to be adding additional courses. So we will be playing with scaling already this year. Um, and I think we've built some technology and some tools to be able to do that. That's been a big piece around the matchmaking process and just optimizing the process throughout the year. Uh, the website is a huge piece of that as well, is trying to uh, show as much information as possible so that anybody who's interested in the model can easily kind of plug in. So we'll be building out more resources on the website to better explain how it works um, and to provide tools and resources to the participating faculty and city staff and students to really optimize the experience. Um, we're also using, uh, piloting a software called Ripen, uh, which is kind of a matching software that um, is matching projects and institutions. So we're just playing with that to, to see if that helps um, be able to deliver the model perhaps more efficiently uh, so that we can scale for, for more participants. Great, thank you. Uh, I really like the, this year's model. We've got, uh, the city of London has great projects, uh, good connection with our courses. So we've got a, a, a good, a foundation, I think. Um, I think one of the opportunities moving forward in the next two or three years will be to reach out to other stakeholder groups. Um, I think that was uh, something we didn't really have time for this year, uh, which would be to actually uh, reach out and, and meet, uh, perhaps do workshops, uh, more interaction with stakeholders that would be impacted by the designs and projects we're working on. And, and that's something that uh, will evolve over time. And I think there's uh, uh, really good opportunities for that. Okay, so um, I think we've come to the end of our time. It's almost 3.30. Did you want to say actually anything else, um, actually Misha, before I actually close off the session? Well, just thanks again for including us um, in this conference. This has been a great opportunity for us and, and a nice occasion for us to come together as well. Um, and so thank you for that. If anybody wants more information about City Studio, uh, our, the London website is citystudiolondon.ca. Um, and you can, I think my email address is on the bottom of the web page. You can, you can connect with us that way. Um, and if you want to support us, um, please follow us on social media. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Um, and please engage with us and let us know what you think's working, what we can do better. Um, that, that really helps us. Okay, great. Thank you. And on behalf Michael? of actually, sir. Um, oh, sorry. Was, is there time for a, one last question or are we, is it, is uh, it, sorry? No, it's over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is right. it quick? Uh, it just, when a course collaboration is formed, is the expectation that the partnership will continue the following year? No, not necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So on actually behalf of ANSWER, I, I would like to actually thank you all for actually joining us here today. It was very informative um, and inspiring to learn about this, like, actually deep actually collaboration that's involving all of these actually different stakeholder groups to actually have a positive impact. Actually not only on actually students, but on your actually cities and your neighborhood and the people that actually live there. So thank you very much. Um, and I hope to see you all again at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye, Bye now.